Hell, we're all talking about it, we're all thinking about it, a lot of us are probably on our way to meet the Prince of Darkness because we as a society are pretty awful. However, I've been playing a game called Hades and it's actually pretty sweet. It's been taking me a while to upload this video, not because I am lazy, I, I absolutely am a little lazy but don't tell anyone that, but it takes 22 and a half hours to beat. Uh, I'm also just ass at the game, so it took me a little bit longer than that. But I'm here to talk with you about it today. It's a roguelike, so let's get into it. So even though I haven't uploaded a video about this game, that does not mean that I have not tried to talk about it to people because I am so very excited to talk about it. I tried to bring it up to my brother and said, hey, have you heard about Hades? To which he quickly responded with, Hades nuts on your face. And then I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel the need to bring it up again for some reason. I can't quite... Can't quite put my finger on why. Uh, now that I'm here to talk about the game, Hades is wonderful. And not only in its storytelling, but in its art style, the way that it introduces weapons, the characters, uh, relationships, the conversations that you have with them, the ending, the replayability. I could talk about this game for a long time. So, here we go. The game introduces you, uh, not through any prologue or epilogue or any kind of exposition or storytelling, it is visual experience and mechanics, which is kind of unique for a game nowadays because there's usually about 10 minutes of exposition before you even play the game. So that was, that was a nice touch. You get thrown immediately into uh, the first world of the underworld, uh, Tartarius, where you play as Zagreus, the son of Hades, and you go through and you, you will die. Um, unless you're some, like, mega gamer. I myself am not one of those. <laughs> so you die, you respawn in the pool, uh, in the house of Hades, and you go around, and this is where you get your first taste of the world, the characters, the art style, just how much investment and care was put into this game immediately. And you're introduced to so many different characters, such as uh, Medusa, Nyx, Hades himself, Achilles, and different uh, Greek mythological heroes, which are all really cool to see just because there's not a lot of games or different kinds of media that introduces them that well besides God of War. So it's always just nice to see that. But after this, you go and you walk through Zagreus's room, which is a mess, and it even makes a point about that to, to kind of talk about it, and it's just funny and makes him relatable. And it uh, got a good giggle out of me. So after this, you learn that the main purpose of uh, the story and what Zagreus is trying to do is break out of the underworld to go see his mother. And obviously, Hades does not like this because I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but you're not exactly supposed to leave hell once you're there. And once you're bound to it, you're not really supposed to, you know, walk on out. Zagreus says, nah, nah. Not that guy, you're not John, that guy. trust me. You're not so, that guy. He tries to walk himself out of it. And along the way, you go through four different levels of hell. You have Tartarius, Asphodel, Elysium, and then the uh, Sadier area. And, oh my god, each level is so diverse and has its own group of enemies. And there's four distinct bosses for each level. And it's just, there's a whole bunch of new things to do in each area. So you go through all of this, you learn all about it, and there's even these characters that can help you along the way. And the first one is Sisyphus, and the second one is Eurydice, and then the third one is the nameless hero until you learn his name, but I don't want to spoil that, so we're going to wait for that. And the fourth one, there isn't one. But again, it's just so cool to see these, these mythological characters being brought to life so well. And may I mention the voice acting is amazing in this game. Which... Only after I played the game did I learn that Skelly is also voiced by the same guy who voices Zagreus, which is crazy to me because one of them sounds like Danny DeVito and one of them sounds like a fine young British gentleman. That that threw me for a little bit of a whirl. Um, but each one of your runs is entirely different because of the boons that you can get from each of the gods that you talk to. Uh, the gods on Olympus are under the impression that your boy Zagreus is trying to leave to get to Mount Olympus. And so they, they give him their powers to try and help him get out, and it is entirely random which of these gods you're going to run to on each run and which powers you're going to get. Making each run entirely different and adding a lot of replayability to each uh, run that you do. So, it, I, <laughs> I, this game took me like 30 hours to beat, and part of it was because I'm ass, part of it was because I legitimately just wanted to see what would happen if you did certain builds with what, or certain weapons with what, and every time it was a unique experience. Now, 
It, take, it took me around 13 hours to get my first break out of hell, and my naive little gamer goo goblin brain thought that that was all I had to do. And to like beat the game, so I was like, oh nice, you know, solid, solid 13 hour playthrough, that was great, I had a great time on it. And then I like, the, the credits didn't roll, and I was like, huh, that's weird. That's, uh, okay, did I do something wrong? And I looked it up, and everyone was like, so, the first time you break out is actually a tutorial. You have to get out 10 times in order for it to like actually mean something. So, I didn't know that, so I uh, queued the next 20 hours of my life, and I beat it. I beat the game. Now, those 20 hours are very enjoyable, and you learn a lot throughout that. For, wh uh, for one of which, you talk to a lot of the gods throughout that time, and the relationship that the gods have with Zagreus, and that Zagreus has with all the different gods, is entirely and incredibly unique, and not only the way that you talk to them, but the way that they're actually related. For example, uh, Zeus is Zagreus's uncle, and it's just, it's, their conversations they have are so funny and just so pure, and it's how an actual uncle and nephew would talk to each other. And look, your father's always been rather difficult, and he's not so much as called in quite a long time. <laughs> You'll have a better home where you belong, here on Olympus, and to help you on your journey, have Thank you, blessing. Zeus. <laughs> like, that. It's, there's just, it's written so well, but with that slight hint that they are gods and so it's egocentric and almost everything they do is competitive slightly. And uh, there's even some chambers where you have to pick a god's power over the other. It could be like Zeus and Aphrodite or Poseidon and Ares. And whichever one you choose, the other one will get pissed off at you and try and kill you for that, for that chamber. So it, for me, it was written, it was written perfectly. Um... So, after you go through Satarius, Asphodel, and Elysium, and the Seder area, and give Cerberus his uh, Seder for him to leave, uh, you fight Hades. And now, this is not only with Hades, this is all of the bosses, but Hades and Zagreus, and every single boss before that, have unique conversations every time you fight them. It is not the same conversation each time, they will have a different conversation every single time that does not only differ from the one you had before, but is actually correlative to it and they will bring up other instances of them talking in future uh, conversations to use against you. And it just really adds to that world building and the story that they're portraying here and makes it feel like there's a genuine grudge, genuine just feelings involved, and it's wonderful. Hades is probably one of the best voice acted characters in the entire game. And it's really a joy to like see him talk every time. And he's almost funny in a way because of how dark he is. And I, you can absolutely tell that that's what the developers were going for. And it's just refreshing to see a villain or an antagonist for that matter that you don't entirely hate and is a relatable person. And uh, after you beat Hades 10 times and you get the ending, the ending genuinely feel like it was something that you had to work for, but it was entirely worth it and something that I'm glad that I got to see. And that is one of the few cutscenes in the entire game, if not the only one, at the end. And uh, it is, it's so worth it. Because one of the key aspects of the cutscene is something that you've been wanting for the entire game. And you've seen it for the entire game. And just seeing you actually use it in that final cutscene makes it entirely worth it. But, um, after you beat the game, it doesn't even end there. There's this thing called heat that you can add to each run of the chamber that you do, or each uh, trial of hell that you try and get out of, and it makes it harder. It's kind of like turning the knob whenever you're cooking eggs and watch all of them sizzle a little faster. You can get burned, kind of like that. Um, but this adds a ton of replayability to the game and makes it harder each time if you really want to test how good you are. Not to mention, all of the all of the bosses are equally engaging and fun to fight. All have their own unique attacks, animations, their own their own unique characters. None of them are like copy and paste. And they're actually all of their attacks are um, a mixture of the enemy's attacks in the level of hell that they're in. So the champions of Tartarus have the kind of the same moveset that the enemies of Tartarus have. The champion of Asphodel kind of had the same attacks that the champions or the enemies of Asphodel have, and so on and so forth. Besides Hades, because Hades is a dick, and he's also a god, so there's that. But overall, I would this this game is entirely worth it.
I mean, it's incredible, the art style. There is so much work that was put into this game. There's 630 total boons and abilities that you can get, maybe even a little bit more by now. And it's, it's impressive. It genuinely, from every technical standpoint, art style standpoint, acting standpoint, story standpoint, it is impressive. And I would give it like a nine or an eight and a half. Genuinely one of the top games that I've played for this entire year. And I'm so glad that I played it now because I, I wish I would have figured out about it sooner. But I think that's about it. So I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Always remember to love one another. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. But my next video is going to be a doozy, let me tell you. <laughs>